All right, welcome everybody. My name is Roger Curry, and uh, I want to thank you for joining me on this educational presentation, which is about how to beat the markets with 80 to 90% certainty in these historically uncertain times. Now, this presentation is going to be quite a bit different from anything else you've encountered because no other system or strategy that I know of delivers the level of certainty that my method guarantees. So let's see if this sounds a little bit like you, okay? Do you experience the feeling of uncertainty before and after you enter a position on whether or not your trade will work out for you? Really think about that because uncertainty is a very common feeling, common emotion that people will encounter when they're excited about something that looks good on the surface, they feel good about it, they get in, but they have no idea before they get in whether it's going to succeed and be profitable or not. And especially after they're in, then the real stress starts to kick in and they're starting to wonder if this is gonna really gonna hit their target. It's not gonna hit their target. Is it gonna recover? Is it not gonna recover? Is it gonna pull back? What's gonna happen? And that's pretty stressful. So think about that. Do you experience that? Another thing is, are you hitting your stops more often than you'd like? Or are you holding on to large drawdowns or experience big stops? And by the way, many people hold on to large drawdowns because it helps them avoid taking a stop loss when things go differently for them than what they had hoped for, right? But then they're also stuck sitting around with gut-wrenching stress, hoping it will recover, right? And then this keeps you dependent on something that's out of your control as you wait to see whether or not that market's gonna recover when you need it to. folks. You and I both know hope is not an effective or sustainable strategy, but many of us lean on hope, right? When we enter the market, I hope it's going to do this. I hope it's going to do it. Oh God, I hope it doesn't do this. That sort of gut-wrenching stress is something I want to address with you today. Now, do you find yourself having a hit or miss experience, sort of a roller coaster experience with your performance? And do you feel stuck no matter what you try with an inability to be, um, to be able to consistently grow your account on a monthly basis with a reliable, long-term, sustainable level of consistency in your performance outcomes? Really think about that. Are you tired of always needing the next new thing or version 2.0, chasing after what's working now? Because that is commonly what we experience. For those of you with any experience, you know, you've never been able to stick to the one thing that you thought was going to be good for you, that you were excited about, it seems to work for a while, and then all of a sudden it starts to work inconsistently, poorly, or not at all, right? So, so that's an important point for us to consider. We're going to go over that today. Now, if you've said yes to any one or more of these, then I want you to know that I can definitely and confidently fix that for good once and for all, all right? Now, the information that I'm gonna to present to you is basically very important to those who are committed to achieve very low risk positions, low to no drawdowns. We're talking about having no more than 2% or less downside risk per position, having a high win rate of 80 to 90%, and also eliminating 80 to 90% of the bad trades before you pull the trigger and give back your capital. I'm talking about trades that um, essentially look good on the surface, right? You like them for whatever reason, whatever signal or, or uh, setup or alert that, that gives you something that says, oh, this looks good, right? You have a reason for wanting to enter a position, right? But then those trades that look good, that start to struggle and fail, imagine being able to actually identify 80 to 90% of those right up front that they're actually going to struggle and fail despite the fact they look good on the surface and avoiding them all together. That's a very powerful point that I want you to consider. Think about that. Of course, the other thing we have is the ability to accelerate your account growth when you have consistency, right? When you're not giving back money, you're able to compound that. 
And when you're able to do that with consistency, remember, with consistency, you're able to make a real impact. Without consistency, you've got nothing. You're always starting and stopping, starting over. And that in, its, in and of itself really is um, very exhausting. And, um, and it's a very inefficient way to go about investing and growing your capital, or even especially if you're, for those of you who are interested in cash flowing. If you're committed to gain a level of certainty through the clarity, the confidence, the consistency, and the control of what I'm about to share with you today, then let's begin with going over the biggest obstacle to your long-term trading success. And actually, before I do, I'd like to know from each of you what you believe the biggest obstacle is. Okay, so, so please do me a favor and type in the chat field what you feel has been the biggest obstacle to your trading success long-term. Go ahead and type that in the chat box now. All of you should have a chat. Uh, again, tell me in that chat field what your biggest obstacles to trading success have been. Take a moment and do that. Actually, uh, while you're typing your response to me, I can see some people have joined. Um, let me just uh, qu quickly reintroduce myself. I'm obviously Roger Curry. I'm the founder and CEO of Market Forecasting Academy and the developer of Demand Imbalance Arbitrage, which I'll be covering with you today. But for context, it's important that you know that I'm like many of you. I started my trading journey by shelling out large sums of money to well-meaning people, only, be, only to be disappointed no matter what I did, no matter how hard I tried over and over again. Nothing ever lasted. Now, this doesn't mean that anyone was taking advantage of me, right? Because I always went after what I thought was the most credible uh, and the best education or resource I could find. But as, as you'll soon see, that even the professionals are victims of the very thing that I had to overcome on my own. So each time I thought I finally found what I needed, it somehow ended with yet another disappointment. So I kept finding myself constantly looking for the next new thing. It seemed to be working at that time, right? And that turned out to be an endless cycle, which many professionals say was just the nature of the beast. Right? They accept that and they actually work within the market understanding that they're going to have a time where they're making money and they're going to have a time when they start giving back. They have to stop and realize, okay, I'm, I'm giving back a lot more than I normally do. So that strategy probably is not working. Let me figure out what's working now. And they start to go back into the development mode and they come back and here's what's working now. And for those of you who are subscribed or go after people who are always doing that and, and, and figuring that out and, and kind of saying, here's a version 2.0, 3.0, here's the next new thing. Here's an update. Uh, you understand that cycle. Okay. But that doesn't have to be the case. You can end that. But for me, it was after 14 years and spending more than $300,000 on education and on sy systems and on tools during that whole period of time that I really had to come to a place where I had to admit to myself that I was not much better off than when I first began. Now, I may have learned a lot, a lot of good information, but what I learned wasn't really getting me anywhere. I wasn't moving forward. So the value really wasn't there for me. And that started me on a journey, which ended up with me discovering a completely different approach to the markets. And once I fine-tuned it, I was finally able to accomplish the goals that I had set for myself through the markets. And that led to having a lot of free time on my hands. And it's important to share that I never intended on teaching my methodology or turning it into a business. But it was when people around me started kind of noticing all the free time I was enjoying, it, you know, they curiously started asking, what do you do? And when they found out that I had a very controlled approach for being consistent and outperforming the markets without taking big risks or holding on to large drawdowns, it naturally piqued people's interest. And that's when people began to ask if I'd be willing to teach them. And I recalled at the time how rewarding it was for, for me to just teach Sunday school. So I was like, sure, why not? You know, so from there, it kind of snowballed. And today, 90% of my clients still come from word of mouth referrals from existing clients. And I think that statistic alone will tell you a lot about what you need to know about me. But for now, you can relax and really focus on taking in what I, what I wanna share with you because there's nothing to buy at the end of this presentation. I really wanna open your eyes, give you some golden nuggets of insights that I think you're gonna, that, that will give you a paradigm shift, but I can guarantee that it will prove to be the most valuable information you'll hear all year. So back to the question I asked you, all right, about your biggest obstacle to long-term trading success. Let me look at some of the responses here that came in. 
All right, let me pull that chat box out and see what we've got here. All right. Struggle with winning consistently. Uh, I tend to deviate from my trading plan when I change my emotional state. Interesting. That's that's very good. Okay, so um, let me actually touch on that. If you think about why do we deviate from a trading plan? Why do we deviate from the rules? Okay, why do we get emotional? It really comes back to the whole topic that we're discussing today, and that is we have a level of uncertainty. There's an unknown, all right? So if there's an unknown, I'm now dealing with something that's making me feel a bit threatened, feeling uncomfortable, okay? Think about walking through a, uh, a dark alley, all right? Long, dark alley. It's very uncomfortable. Uh, it's nerve wracking. You're anxious. And so you're, you're just, you're moving along, but you don't know what can come out at you, right? But what if that dark alley was suddenly lit up by big spotlights and it was just clear as day? Now you have a level of confidence rather than walking through that alley with uncertainty as to what's going to happen, how are you going to end up? Now you have a level of confidence and certainty, right? Can, can things still happen? Yes. But are, are the odds high that they will? No, they're very low, right? But when it's dark, the odds increase that there's a lot more chance for something to occur that, that's going to give you a sour experience. So it doesn't matter. And by the way, for those of you who are very disciplined and very good at sticking to the rules, but still end up with disappointment after disappointment and inconsistency, or you get stuck holding on to large drawdowns because you don't want to take that stop. You have to wait for that thing to come back. Again, um, you know, I have some people tell me, well, I have a high win rate, but then, but they're, but they're holding on to large drawdowns. You know, market turns against them and, they, and they're, they're sitting there holding double digit um, negative um, account balance. And they're, they're stressfully waiting for it to come back and recover. Meanwhile, that, that capital is paralyzed. You can't use it productively anywhere else. And so you, you basically, you're stuck, right? So whether you're super disciplined or you, or you struggle to, to follow a plan, both of them, you're going to have an experience of inconsistency very much because what we're dealing with is two, are two different things. When you're, when you're very disciplined and sticking to the rules, we're going to discuss in a moment here what causes whatever you're doing to stop working, why it never lasts, and why you're stuck endlessly going after the next new thing. And for those of you who um, struggle with following a plan because it doesn't seem to be faithful to you, it's not providing consistent experience, that triggers your emotional state that changes and causes you to veer off. You start to say, well, maybe this time it's going to do this. Well, maybe this time it's going to do like the other time. And you start to go into this whole you know, frantic state that makes you, of course, stressed. But again, that also feeds into the inconsistency, right? Both of those are going to be rooted in things that are not in your control and where you don't have a level of certainty to them. Make sense? So having said that, all your responses are valid, but they all actually tie into a single core obstacle that causes all these other problems that you mentioned. And when this core obstacle is finally dealt with, all the other problems automatically go away, okay? This is really important for you to understand. And again, that core obstacle is to, to your trading success is uncertainty. Because uncertainty is the ultimate killer to trading success long-term. And it's the uncertainty about what price is going to do next that stifles a person's success. It's the uncertainty about whether or not your position is going to reach its target before you have to pull the trigger. It's the uncertainty about whether conditions have changed after you're in the market and what to do about it, okay? Uncertainty causes doubt, fear, and stress. Right, which causes you to behave in risky and self-sabotaging ways, like I just mentioned. And it's a, it especially leads to holding onto large drawdowns. So if you're trading with uncertainty, it's a roller coaster ride, no matter what strategy or system you're using. And it's exhausting and it'll always lead to inconsistent results, which you can never really rely on. If you can't eliminate the uncertainty altogether, you'll never achieve long-term trading success no matter what trading system and no matter what trading strategy or signal service you use, because you're always going to be uncertain about what is going to happen next. And by the time you find out, it's often too late, unless you can overcome what I call the three causes of uncertainty. 
And the very first cause of uncertainty is relying on lagging indicators. Have you ever realized that price itself is a lagging indicator? Which means any other indicator derived from price, like RSI, Bollinger Bands, Moving Averages, MACD, and you, you name any and all the traditional indicators that come on a chart. And they're not only lagging, but they are even more disadvantaged than looking at price action itself. Why? Because again, price itself is lagging and therefore the chart indicators are lagging even more. So you have a lagging indicator on top of a lagging indicator. <laughs> How can you ever realistically expect to get ahead when you're relying on something that will inherently keep you behind and disadvantaged? You can't. Demand is the only true leading indicator because price always follows demand. Let me repeat that again. Demand is the only true leading indicator because price always follows demand. Think about it. What causes price to rise and fall in any market? Demand, right? Demand is what moves first and then price follows after demand to catch up to wherever the demand is. And of course, due to the multiple factors that influence and affect demand at each and every moment, demand is constantly expanding or contracting, which drives the hundreds of thousands of buying and selling decisions that goes on each and every day. So that's really what causes the price to fluctuate the way that it does. It's all the demand factors and their combined impact that move price at any given time. Now, I'll get into that a little more later, but when you know that price will always ultimately reflect where the demand is, then you now also know that the reason price will go up is because the overall demand in the market at that moment happens to be increasing or growing, right? And therefore, the reason price will go down is because demand is decreasing or shrinking. Make sense? So with that said, it's also important to know that there are times when demand significantly shifts and shrinks more rapidly than usual. And it's during those times when you'll see price correct or crash rapidly and significantly. So really let that sink in because this enables you for the very first time to go places you weren't able to go before. Because knowing where demand is in real time at any given moment automatically empowers you to be a step ahead of the market, which means you'll also be a step ahead of the crowd. And you'll also do so in a very timely manner because we're looking at demand in real time. But how do you identify real time demand? so that you can truly be ahead of the market instead of being victimized by it. So that brings us to cause number two for uncertainty. And it's about not having a complete picture of all the objective data that you need to consider to identify real-time demand in any market in any time frame. Yes, that means stocks, futures, commodities, crypto, currencies. If you trade options, you need to know what the underlying asset's doing. Uh, the indexes, it doesn't matter what market, what asset class, it doesn't matter what time frame. If you're a long-term uh, investor, if you're a, a swing trader, a position trader, if you're an intraday, day trading, it doesn't matter because demand is there at each and every time frame, at each and every level, in each and every market. Demand is the one common ground that moves all price action. So this simply means that you have an incomplete picture of what's going on and that leads you to trading blind when you don't understand where the demand is. Because remember, everyone's really price focused, but we want to be demand focused. But did you know that there are eight major demand factors that move price? See, most people only use one or two of them, like fundamentals and technical analysis and you know, their subsets. But there are six more factors that they aren't properly accounting for. And then people wonder why they get surprised and blindsided by seemingly unseen forces. Now, let's cover the eight major demand factors that move price. First one is obviously the fundamentals, okay? And fundamental analysis. The second one is geopolitical forces, including central bank and macroeconomic effects. Third is volatility. Fourth is market sentiment. And you've got liquidity levels. Now, sometimes people will use this. They'll use volume or order flow and trade flow, and they, they think they have an edge because they feel like they're trading alongside with banks and smart money. But that's actually just one other factor. And, and really, 
if you're using fun, a combination of fundamental, technical, and maybe order flow, well, that's three. You still have five other factors that are going to blindside you. They're going to outweigh the three, right? So think about that. The combined impact of five factors you don't know how to properly account for are going to absolutely overcome and outweigh the three that you might think that you're, uh, got, you have an edge with, okay? Prime liquidity pools is another factor, which is really interesting. This is where uh, you see high frequency uh, trading algorithms. That's the HFT algorithms. The brokers, market makers love to target these areas because they have an insight to that order flow. They know they can, many investment banks trade against their own clients' funds, right? Because they can see where their orders are going. And so they can see that there's an elasticity to the market, right? There's a like a squishy area, like a zone where, where if they put their weight on it with, with a big enough fund, they can actually cause the market to... Uh, be manipulated for a short period of time where it can kind of push through a certain level only to then be carried back and buoyed back up by the rest of the market, right? So there's times and zones where the market can be manipulated and they know that, they know how to do that. And so if you've ever, for those of you who are experienced um, actively trading the markets, you'll know that there are moments where you get uh, you get orders that are front running your order or you've got a stop hunt where you, where you someone runs your stop and then, and then the market runs up without you, right? Or you get this weird whipsaw that seems to come out of nowhere, right? And then all of a sudden the market carries on without you, right? Those are prime liquidity pools that you're in. You don't realize they're there. But if you know that they exist, doesn't it make sense to take those into account? So that way you can actually be on the other side of that so that if and when those are triggered, you no longer have to be victimized by it, right? You can actually take advantage of it and ride along the coattails of those insiders who actually understand what they're doing with that. Um, now, this doesn't mean that each and every time you're aware of that, that you can participate. There are times when you see that the reward on the other side for what you need to get out of the position uh, may not be enough based on the, uh, the risk you have to take into account. So there's, a, there's a, some factors that have to be taken into account, but well, that's, a, that's another thing. But, but the point is, it is a factor that we look into that I've developed within the process. So you have a very complete, holistic approach to the market, okay? Then we have in, imbalances in supply and demand themselves, all right? And those have an impact on price. And last but not least, notice it's last, okay? Because those other things are major factors, but we have now technical analysis, uh, its factors and its effects on the market. And this also takes into account and it replaces the most useful technical indicators that traders use, including Fibonacci, Elliott Wave, and GAN, all right? So it, I, I'm thinking now, I, you know, if I'm in your shoes, you're probably feeling like this is going to be an overwhelming complex thing, right? So it seems like an overwhelming amount of information to track. And actually it's not, okay? It's kind of like, um, it's, it's kind of like a fuel gauge in your car, all right? What I've done is I've combined all these demand factors into a simple visually intuitive indicator giving users a leading real-time demand indicator. So you always know where price is going to go next with an 80 to 90% level of accuracy. In other words, having an 80 to 90% statistical probability of being right, okay? Now, I want you to think about something for a second. Like if you think about your car, right? Uh, there's a lot of electronics and technology that's behind that, that, that it, that's doing all kinds of calculations, is taking all kinds of... Uh, you know, data from your car, from your engine and road and whatnot. But at the end of the day, all that stuff, all that complicated stuff is under the hood and behind the, the dashboard. All you need to look at is what's the temperature, what the, the temperature in your car, temperature outside. You want to see the fuel gauge. You want to know how much you've got a 250 mile road trip. Um, you know, you look at the, the, the fuel gauge, you know whether you've got enough fuel to take it. It's that simple. There's nothing complicated or complex, nothing that takes a bunch of time. You look at it and almost instantaneously, right? It doesn't take very long for you to figure out, oh, I don't have enough fuel or, oh, my car's overheating. I better pull over. It gives you objective data that enables you to make concrete, confident, controlled decisions, all right? That's a very important aspect of what we're talking about. So I want to show you a very powerful but simple example of the stock of Tesla, since many people like and follow Tesla stock, all right? right. Now, down below, you see, you've got the price chart up above. Down below, uh, at the bottom of the chart, represents all those eight major factors I just talked about there and their combined impact, right, on price, reflecting 
real time demand in the market correlated to where the price is at. Okay, I'll explain this to you in a second. Okay, Th this is what I was talking about a minute ago in regards to how I've combined the demand factor. So it acts like a fuel gauge in essence, right? Um, to help its users see where the demand is in real time and how it's likely to fuel the market with at least an 80 to 90% level of analysis accuracy, okay? Now, what I'm showing you here is going to be an oversimplified view of how to apply this form of analysis because it's, it's not just an indicator, which happens to be a leading indica uh, indicator in nature here, but more importantly, there's also a process, okay, that incorporates this, uh, this piece of information here on how to correctly interpret what it is uh, telling us in order to produce the accuracy my methodology is known for, okay? So don't think the indicator alone is the magic sauce, but rather it's part of the process of analysis and interpreting the data that when we put together and it's combined creates the amazing results we're talking about. But the simplified point I wanna make here is how visually simple and intuitive it is so you can see that it's nothing overwhelming. So let me take out my laser pointer here. Let me show you. So when we see price at this uh, level here, this price here, if you can see my laser pointer, if we look at the, we're, we're around the 700 level, right? We're down here somewhere, okay, near that. All right, well, as price goes up, we're seeing at the bottom what's reflective uh, in demand, right? So demand is also increasing. So we've got a lot of demand supporting that price up here as price pulls back a little bit, right? You get some people who take some profits, market sells off a little bit, then it comes back up. Why? It comes back up because there was, a lot of interest and demand up there, but look what happens when it comes back to retest those previous highs. We're back at around $1,000 here. This is around the $1,000 mark, okay? Demand down below, okay, look what happened. Since this is a real-time demand indicator, it's telling us that at these highs, while the price is around $1,000, the interest, the combined interest by those combined factors of demand are telling us that demand is equal to and actually a little bit lower than where it was right last time here. So the last time demand was in this area, it was over here. Well, where was price last time? It was down in this area. So this is telling us that while price is at around a thousand dollar mark, the demand is down by where it was in the 700s. This is telling you before it occurs in a very timely manner that the market is not going to sustain that high. It's unsustainable. And therefore, you're going to see about a 30% correction in price. And sure enough, what happens? The market pushes down and, and corrects down into the 700s. Okay. So that's totally objective, visually intuitive, very clear. Didn't take a whole lot of complex things to figure that out. Now, again, this is an oversimplified example, right? Because there's multiple layers that are similar to this one that I, that I, tack on, but it takes, you know, time to, to learn, that give me a more uh, holistic and a more complete understanding because this is just one indication, but it's the first thing that catches my eye. So I, it alerts me. And when I do the rest of the analysis, I'm able to confirm and have the 80 to 90% level of accuracy. This alone by itself will give me maybe a 60% a to 70%. But when I put, tack on my other analysis, suddenly I'm into the 80, 90% analysis accuracy. Okay. But this gives you just a kind of a small slice of the pie to understand that these steps are visually intuitive. They're not that complicated. Anybody can do it, right? So just want to make sure that you guys don't feel like it's anything complicated. So now moving on to cause number three for uncertainty. If you have ever wondered why a strategy or system seems to perform well for a while, but that always eventually falls apart, no matter how diligent you are at sticking to the rules, right? which means no amount of discipline in this case can even help you, right? It's because no matter what system, what strategy, what technology, what algorithm or signal service you use, they are all subject to something I call the fatal flaw. And it's unavoidably baked into every strategy and system and signal service you'll ever encounter, no matter how simple or complex it is and no matter how much cutting edge technology is behind it, including AI, okay, why? Because even with AI and machine learning and neural networks and all these great fancy snazzy, you know, you know, names for technology, quantum computers, okay? I've got a friend who's, um, you know, one of the top people in IT and, and, and the whole security space and internet and, and all that. And he works with 
quantum computing, and he, he tells me that we're not likely going to see in our lifetime the ability for even a quantum computer to be able to interpret context like the human mind can. And think about that. Okay, so if you're depending on technology, a robo advisor, or any of those things that seem to be cool, um, they can have a nice little track record, but you, you're eventually going to set yourself up for some kind of disappointment. Okay. And you think about it, if you know going into something, it's going to likely end up failing and disappointing you. Why would you even start? Okay. Now, here's let me explain to you the reason behind this. Let's look, look at the word runs, R U N S, runs. Okay. Now, listen to this. My nose runs, my car runs, the water runs, the boy runs. Same word, completely different meaning based on the context of where that word showed up. So when, you, when a computer is looking at things and it's looking at a set of definitions and it's trying to learn from previous behaviors or whatnot, it's always looking at those definitions. And so you know, if it sees runs, right? My nose runs, it's going to think that my nose leapt off my face and ran away from me, right? That's going to cause the computer to misbehave. And so when we're talking about money and decisions, you're going to have problems at some point. Okay. And we, and there's plenty of examples from Goldman Sachs to, uh, I think, is it Knight Capital, and many others who've blown their funds up and, and had losing quarters because they were depending on these, what they thought was exciting technology and algorithms and AI to trade for them. And, and they fed on themselves and some of them blew up, okay, and fed on themselves and, and just, disintegrated so we and and it's next to impossible to keep them updated constantly it's just humanly impossible the man hours it takes to do that why again because the market's always evolving think about yourself as a human are we ever the same as we were before there's aspects of us that are maybe similar but we're always evolving and growing and we're changing we're always changing one way or another the market is no is no different it's always evolving Okay, and that's the problem. Okay, so technology itself, if you want to lean on it, you're going to be sorely disappointed. You will be setting yourself self up for disappointment. Remember my words, because if, if you ignore this, you think, ah, he means well, but uh, this thing, you know, I'm convinced it's going to do this. And when it ends up eventually smacking your hand, uh, my hurt, you're going to remember my words running right through, and you're going to go, aha, that's what he's talking about. So I hope to help you avoid that. Okay. The reason is simply this. Every strategy and approach to buying and selling in the markets are necessarily developed based on the current and previous conditions in the market. There's no way for them to be able to see what kind of uh, evolution the market's going to go through. There's no way to look in the future and know how it's going to evolve, right? So you can only base things on what's current and what was previous. So think about that. If that's the case, all right? then what we have here is when those conditions do evolve and change just enough as they always do, then the newly evolved set of conditions will no longer support your strategy or your technology, right? And that causes your strategy or whatever approach you're using to begin to work poorly, inconsistently, or not at all, right? So now you're back to the drawing board, right? If I have a strategy, I want to wear shorts and a t-shirt and flip-flops, then I necessarily need to be in a condition where it's warm or hot. If it's freezing weather, a t-shirt, flip-flops, and shorts doesn't work very well, right? So, so, so that's what we're talking about. So, but it's this dependency on having conditions stay favorable in order to be successful, which is out of your control, right? But it's that reliance on the type of conditions you need that causes people to endlessly keep coming back to the point where they feel compelled to search for the next new thing that's supposed to be working now, right? It's, it's fool's gold, guys, because market conditions will never cease to evolve and change. In fact, the only constant in the market's conditions is change, okay? So continually being dependent on favorable conditions is actually a setup for continually experiencing one disappointment after another. This is the real reason for, for those of you with any lengthy experience you know, we've never been able to stick to one thing and make it work for you long term, right? Because you want something that you can sink your teeth into that will work reliably for you long term with a sustainable level of consistency. And I know nobody in the industry, including the professionals, have that. And this is something that is unique to, by God's grace, it's, I'm, it still baffles me and humbles me that I was able to figure this out. But I've been able to, 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 to 
develop a process that's based on principles that never change as I'm sharing with you here. So the scenario, which nobody really likes to admit and talk about, is what perpetuates the common experience of inconsistency, uncertainty, and the fear that drives many of your actions and behaviors. Okay, you really just can't help it when you're in those circumstances. Now, with that in mind, you know what the three underlying causes of, of uncertainty are. And to summarize, it's really about relying on lagging indicators, right? That's one of the main underlying causes of uncertainty. But it's also in not having the complete picture, right? That we talked about everything beyond fundamentals and uh, order flow and trade flow or technical analysis the, and the five other uh, uh, demand factors we talked about. It's not having a complete picture to provide total objectivity to identify where all the combined demand factors are in real time at every moment in the market, no matter what market you're trading, no matter what time frame you're on, no matter what strategy or approach you're using. Lastly, it's dealing with the fatal flaw that's inherent in all the systems and strategies that you'll ever use, right? So let me ask you this. If you could eliminate the uncertainties in any market or time frame, and were certain of a favorable outcome 80 to 90% of the time, how would that change your experience? Would you be less stressed, more relaxed and confident? Would your trading results be more positive? When you know both when and where the odds are stacked in your favor versus when and where they are not, that changes everything for your ability to be confident about your actions to be successful and to do so with consistency. So confidence and consistency go together, okay? And that brings us to the one skill that permanently eliminates uncertainty, which is learning how to accurately forecast future price action based on accurate real-time demand. Because remember, if you know where the demand is in real time, then you also know where price is going and what it is going to do next. Because demand moves first, then price follows after, right? I'm slowing down a bit because I want you to see that in your mind's eye. I want you to really take that in, okay? Because everyone in the industry, including the professionals, are price focused and looking at the price of things. And this is certainly true and obvious when, mainly, when you're mainly considering fundamental analysis or technical analysis in any of their subsets. But when you shift your focus to demand and doing not price analysis, but demand analysis, as I teach it, it flips everything positively on its head. And the simplest and most profitable way to trade the market is by identifying when and where there are significant imbalances between where price is and where the actual demand is. The key is having not just any imbalance, but a significant imbalance, which happens all the time throughout each and every day and each and every week. And this provides you with frequent low risk, high quality and high probability opportunities for profit. I call it demand imbalance arbitrage, which is an innovative industry first methodology that eliminates the uncertainty, the inconsistency and the large drawdowns that are traditionally and commonly experienced in the financial markets. And it's the only method guaranteed to consistently identify and take advantage of frequent, very low risk pockets of significant imbalance between price and demand. And where you're able to profit from those imbalances 80 to 90% of the time. In other words, your analysis will be totally objective and will be right with that level of accuracy. Think about what it would mean to you and how you would feel when you knew that your analysis of what the market will do is going to be right at least 80 to 90% of the time, and especially when your downside risk is never more than 2% or less of your brokerage account capital. Let me explain it another way. To keep things simple, price in any market goes up or down based on where the demand is, right? So we've, we've, we've set that in stone. So if there's more demand for something, then price naturally goes up. And if there's less demand, then price naturally goes down. Now, keep in mind that demand always leads price. There's a little bit of a lag, right? 
as we saw in Tesla, if you remember, demand had shifted down and then price kind of stuck up for like two, three bars and then came down, right? And corrected significantly. So that's what's great about that. Wherever demand is going, whether up or down, price ultimately follows. So remember, as we discussed before, this means demand is a leading indicator of where price is going next, as opposed to all the traditional lagging indicators that can never give you an accurate or reliable indication of where price is going next because they're inherently limited and will ultimately provide you with a hit or miss inconsistent experience, right? Leaving you with the unknowns, right? Leaving you with uncertainty. But with real-time demand analysis, right? Focusing on demand, you now have a reliable leading indicator that provides you with a level of certainty that you've never had before. And certainty about being right 80 to 90% of the time and watching that unfold in your performance outcomes and experience leads to the consistency that you need to make a real impact on your account and life. And that all leads to having a newfound level of confidence and enjoyment through the low to no stress interactions with the markets that you never knew was even possible until now. And that is something that is sustainable long-term because it relies on principles that never change, right? There's constant as gravity. Price will always be led by demand. Where demand is, price is going to fall. That's a principle in life, right? So demand always will drive price. And that means you no longer have to care about the conditions changing and causing you to jump to yet another strategy. Because with a focus on demand, instead of price, you've stepped above and outside that dependence on conditions. And you no longer have to experience failure because of it. Now, with that in mind, with the financial markets in particular, due to the hundreds of thousands of interactions that people all around the world have with the markets on almost a daily basis, this naturally creates a virtually endless situation where demand is constantly expanding or contracting. And this causes price to regularly fluctuate as it's constantly chasing after where the, where the demand is moving to, right? At each and every moment, right? In any given moment. And this fluctuation creates imbalances all the time where price is and where the demand actually is. So again, this is what causes price itself to endlessly cycle up and down each and every moment of the day as it works to catch up to where the demand is moment by moment. And, and that is really one of the most profound shifts you really need to make. Does that make sense, guys? Is that, can I get, I want to make sure you guys are, are, are following through because that's a massive aha moment. That's a, that's a paradigm shift for anyone that is really understanding and grasping this concept, okay? Now, there's another level of dis distinction that's important here because not all demand imbalances are equal. Remember, I mentioned earlier about the focus on significant imbalances, not just any imbalances. Okay, so here's why. Think about a rubber band. If you take a rubber band and just hold the two ends without stretching it much, right, not much is going to happen, right, because it's not stretched out enough, right, in a significant way. So there's not enough potential energy or force to cause any reliable movement to snap back because it's not stretched out all the way. And that means there's still more room for it to continue to stretch out. And therefore you have less of a chance for it to snap back when you need it to. Make sense? Now, notice how that is visually very intuitive and simple to see, and it doesn't take any complicated or time-consuming calculations to very quickly figure that out, right? But what, what happens if you pull that rubber band as far apart as it can go. Now, there's much more likelihood that when you release it, it will snap back with a very certain force, right? And there's not much room for it to keep stretching further away. So this creates a very high probability for having a very clear, specific, and objective outcome. So all of this is to say that being able to see the level of demand imbalance in the markets is what gives you certainty in either taking a position or passing, right? So let me show you what I mean. By the way, this is where it gets really interesting because 80 to 90% of the time, the market is like that unstretched rubber band. Price is too close to demand, which also means your level of certainty is too low to entertain a position in the market because there's not enough potential energy to predict with certainty what will happen. It would be too risky, 
So you simply choose to pass on those trades. And by the way, those trades will often look like they're, they're good opportunities right on the surface, right? But with our focus and newfound clarity, we know they are not high probability opportunities that will provide the reliable, repeatable level of consistency, right? Long-term, right? And the confidence that we desire. And this eliminates the potential losses and drawdowns you would have otherwise sustained from something that doesn't have the high probability you need for a low to no stress experience. On the other hand, about 10 to 20% of the time, the market is like that stretched out rubber band. Demand moves more quickly and more dramatically than price, which goes well beyond the normal imbalances that frequently occur, right? And this creates a significant imbalance that represents a very low risk, high probability opportunity to profit from those significant short-term imbalances as price catches back up to where the demand is, enabling an investor or trader to capture the difference as profit along the way. So this is what I call demand imbalance arbitrage because we're arbitraging or taking advantage of the difference between those discrepancies giving an investor or trader an 80 to 90% true win rate, right? Because not, we're, we're not holding on to large drawdowns anymore, right? And, and that's going to give you, by the way, again, you have an average of 2% or less in total downside risk per position, right? But that dramatically reduces and limits the normal downside risk without limiting the upside profit potential. Right? Think about the risk reward paradigm you've been taught. Hey, if you want more uh, return, higher, higher returns, higher reward, you're going to have to be willing to take on more risk, right? But if you don't want much risk, you want less risk, then you have to be willing to accept lower returns. Well, this flips that paradigm on its head, right? Because of our ability to actually be a step ahead and have a controlled uh, understanding of, of, through our analysis and, and a controlled level of, um, uh, of ob objectivity on our performance, right? and on our experience along the way, this allows you to have opportunities that pop up, they look good, and you have a, like a risk filter that helps you differentiate whether that good looking opportunity is actually going to struggle and fail or really hit its target before you're even committed, right? That's a profound, profound new way of approaching the market, right? So, Obviously, this also means that you avoid the common experiences of holding onto large drawdowns. And of course, that includes being able to accurately predict in a timely manner when and where a significant correction or crash is most likely to occur. And therefore, that stressful experience can be avoided as well. Keep in mind that for those of you who focus on kind of the longer term, these short-term imbalances actually uh, within the context of what we're focused on, if you're focused, let's say, on a daily and a weekly chart, right, you'll have a, sh a short-term imbalance for a day or two or three, right? If you're focused on a four-hour and a one-hour chart, then on the one-hour chart, you're going to have for one or two or three or four hours, you're going to have that short-term imbalance. You know, if you're 15 minute versus an hour and so on and so forth, right? So you can sweep this up and down in time frames depending on your particular focus, all right? So it's not limited to any one thing. But here's the thing. For those of you who not only want to focus on the short term to cash flow and to build their accounts, but who also have some bigger long-term money, very likely for your retirement, I want to quickly cover how to use the same analysis methodology to help you avoid or predict a major correction or crash on your longer-term portfolio um, in a timely manner. Because if you can avoid a 20, 30, 40, 50% correction or crash, and then rather than giving that money back and then filling that financial hole up through, through gains that you hope to make later when it, if and when the, the market recovers on your time when you need it to, um, why not just go into cash when you can forecast those accurately like you saw in, in, um, in Tesla. And then as the market starts to bottom, it looks like it's beginning to recover, go back into the market and ride the gain and its actual gain rather than a hole that you're filling up, right? That's more effective, more efficient and much less stressful by the way. So you now know that demand is made up of multiple factors. In fact, it's the eight major demand factors that we previously discussed, each of which are identifiable and they take time to build, just like a thunderstorm or a hurricane. It takes multiple factors to, co to come together to form the right environment for a storm, right? I mean, you and I can't walk out under a clear blue sky and have it suddenly start pouring rain on us with lightning and thunder. 
we would first see clouds rolling in and getting darker and the temperature changes and the air pressure changes and so on and so forth. So those are identifiable factors that took some time to build, which makes it a forecastable event, right? And, and now that means it also gives you time to take the appropriate action so you're not surprised or caught unprepared by it. It's exactly the same in the financial markets. It's just that up until now, and with this methodology, until it was developed, there was no way to actually assess where the actual demand was in real time at any moment. So we didn't have that timeliness, right? So this really changes everything. This is an innovative first. And these things used to always be a surprise uh, event for people that often caught a person off guard because they had no way to expect it in that timely manner, right? But now you know that you do, okay? And I hope that empowers you. Because now when you can see in real time when demand is shifting dramatically down, significantly away from price, meaning it's created the, the perfect environment for price to significantly correct or crash, just like you saw again in the example of Tesla, that's when you know it's time to take defensive action. And obviously for some of you who know about shorting and would like to short, you can actually profit from that as well. And fortunately, this environment usually takes days and even weeks to build. So there's enough time to act when it matters most. And for those who depend on a financial advisor or money manager for their bigger long-term money in the markets, uh, you can help them help you, right? By calling them up and saying, please take me into cash when you've used this analysis and, you, and it tells you that you're about to experience a double digit correction in the market, right? Before price has a chance to get triggered and follow down to catch up to where the demand has fallen to, right? Does that make sense, everyone? Do, do you see how empowering that is? It literally provides you with a whole new level of control over both your performance outcomes and your experience. So you're not stressed out along the way to achieving your performance. Doesn't that make much more sense? I mean, no one's gonna care more about your money than you will. Right? So this is not about firing or letting someone go. You can help them help you better right? if you have someone that, that you like to work with. But then also if you take things into, into your own hands for being more active and growing a, a brokerage account, you can see that no matter which, which path you want to be on or if you're on both paths, you really want to have that kind of control and that peace of mind. right? You want to make peaceful profits. Okay? Keep that in mind. This provides you with the ability to have peaceful profits. Right? So it just makes sense that you learn a skill where you can fish anytime you want, rather than depending on someone else to feed you fish when you need them to. Uh, I really hope that you, can, you guys can see the value and the wisdom in that. So this methodology basically enables both new and experienced traders and investors to confidently forecast what's going to happen next in any market or time frame with 80 to 90% analysis accuracy. And it helps you to filter out 80 to 90% of the trade opportunities that look good, but are in fact likely to struggle and fail. And that's a profound shift. Let me show you a quick oversimplified example of the market's recent downturn. And I stress, this is an oversimplified example again, because there's a lot more that goes into producing accurate analysis. But this quick example will at least represent how visually intuitive it is, since what I'm showing you is just the first visual indication that tells me that the market is about to turn significantly downwards. Again, similar to the example I showed you in Tesla earlier. But once I identify the first indication of the coming downturn, then I'd have to apply the rest of my analysis process to confirm and validate that indeed, this has an 80 to 90% probability of following through. But the rest of my analysis takes four to six weeks to learn. So I can't go into that here, obviously, but notice the red and green squiggly line below. So let's, let's come back with the, with the laser pointer here, okay? So if you look at that, let's look what we've got. We have here, when the market was up at this area, look where price is at, all right? And it went up a little bit higher, came down a little bit and went back and remained a little bit higher than this previous area, all right? What's interesting about that is when you look at where the demand was, where price was here, price was here, demand was there, Price went up, pulled back, came back, still higher than that previous area, but look what happened. Demand went up and came back is now showing that demand is equal to that previous area here. Well, demand when it was here, price was lower. So now we know automatically we're gonna get a correction here, but we can see that we're, we're not far from moving even lower, right? So we can tell that as the market begins to move down, as we know that it's going to, we're a step ahead of that, but we can also see in our mind's eye that as that's moving down, we're likely gonna see demand begin to move even further. And as it moves further, we can see that there's follow through 
And that then surpasses the previous low. So we know we're in for a more steeper, more significant correction, okay? So again, look at how that took a couple of price bars before it happened. So that's important. So again, demand moves first, price lags behind and moves after demand to catch up to it. So you always have that timely interaction with the market rather than lagging, okay? You're a step ahead of the crowd and the market. Same thing here, when the market comes back up, recovers a little bit, makes a little bit of a, of a high there, pulls back, comes back to retest that same area it was there before, look at where demand was. Demand was up here, right? As the market pulled back and came back to retest that area, demand had shifted dramatically lower than where it was here. So that was not sustainable. That forecasted for you another significant correction back to the downside to move even lower. So you understand how whether you're long-term or short-term, the same principle, this could have been a one minute chart, all right? So if those were minute bars, right? So you're a couple of minutes ahead. If it's daily, you're a couple of days ahead. If it's weekly, you're a couple of weeks ahead. Same, so it's just, it's fractal in nature, right? The same thing works no matter what you do. So that's really, really important. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So it, at the end of the day, what I really wanna make sure you guys come, come across with is that this isn't anything that's complicated or overwhelming, right? It's very, very visually intuitive. So that's really, really important. Let me turn off the laser here so we're not bugging on the next slide. All right. So by learning this one skill, what we're doing here is we're going to be able to provide you with the, what I call the four vital C's for stress-free trading. And the first one is clarity, right? Clarity with total objectivity, all right? And it's important to understand that you need objectivity in the market. If you're looking at something and it's subject to your interpretation, you get 10 people look at it and go, well, I see it this way. I think it's doing that. I think it's doing that. You have a problem. You're going to have inconsistency. But when 10 people can look at the same thing and use the analysis, right, in this, what is essentially a risk filter to help you go, yeah, that's not going to get me where I'm going to go. Again, a, a great example is, I, you know, I have a 250 mile road trip, but my, my gas gauge tells me I only have a quarter of tank of gas in there, right? Well, a quarter tank of gas, we know is not going to get you 250 miles down the road. You're going to have to stop and refuel. That's objective data. That's not anything you have to argue with yourself about. That's not anything you have to go nervously driving a car, wondering when it's going to stop. You know what to do with that information. That gives you a peaceful way to interact, a confident way to interact. And that's really critical, right? Again, we go back to peaceful profits. So when you have that by your side, now you have something that's enabling you to move with confidence, with clarity, with consistency, which is leads us into the next point, right? That clarity, that objectivity is what enables us to have consistency, right? Analysis accuracy gives us clarity, which feeds the consistency. When you have consistency, now you can compound an account and have a meaningful outcome at the end of the year that really makes an impact, all right? So it's not uncommon for someone to be able to use the consistency to be able to build their account more rapidly, right? They have a more frequent interaction, that, that isn't stressful, uh, it's very part-time, whether it's early in the morning, late at night, or some part of the day, it doesn't matter anymore because of the way the markets operate and, and, and are available to us. A very part-time effort of 10 to 15 hours a week, that's it, that's all it takes. You'll we'll have that interaction, have that compounding consistency working for us. And that leads us to number three, control. It gives us control over both our performance and experience, right? So that we, because we can know, okay, this is going to stress me out. So it's like, if I can forecast a storm, does it make sense for me to go out and run my errands in the middle of a storm? No, I'm going to be under pressure. I'm going to be stressed. If I'm under pressure, I'm likely to misbehave. Like for all of us who know how to drive a car, when you're under a lot of pressure because you're running late to an important appointment, you tend to drive that car differently. You behave differently. Even though you're not, you know how to drive, you know the, the law of the land, you know the rules, but you'll start to drive aggressively. And that starts to increase your chances for getting into an accident, having a speeding ticket, or having even a life altering event right? Why? Because we're behaving under pressure. So we want to eliminate the pressure. And this is what this analysis model provides you with, right? And then having control over your performance where through the compounding, you can realistically over a two, three, four, five year period, it's relatively a decent amount of time to be able to compound enough to where you can replicate a full-time income with a part-time effort. Why? Because you're consistent. You're not making money and giving it back, making money, and giving it, you're actually letting it compound. And your growth is always compounding, right? So that's really critical. And then lastly, the last uh, uh, C, right? The four C's is that all enables you to have confidence, right? 
which comes from that certainty that you've developed and built through this skill set. And it is a skill set, guys. I teach people how to learn how to fish for themselves so they're not dependent on anyone or anything else. So if you're committed to transforming your experience in the markets with objective clarity, right? I want you to know that experiencing consistent performance results month after month is something that is realistic. If you, if you spend any time looking me up, you'll see that I don't have a single negative review or negative complaint or comment. I don't uh, make a promise that I can't keep. This is like going to pilot school. Right. If, if you go to pilot school, you want to learn how to be a pilot. It's a process. If you follow the process, it's impossible for you not to go out and make a very stable, very successful career out of it. It's not a hit and miss thing. Right. It's not a roller coaster ride. So but you have to follow the process. Right. There's there's ways how to navigate through all kinds of weather. And there's times when you also are taught when to stay grounded, don't fly in particular types of weather. Right. So there's very clear, objective information that you can have a very long, nice, successful and stable career out of. And that's what we're talking about. If you're committed to having confidence because you're forecasting with 80 to 90 percent analysis accuracy right if you want to get rid of the fear the doubt the second guessing of yourself and the stress how many of you kind of deal with that second guessing you go, in, you go into a trade and then all of a sudden you start to doubt and you're second guessing why because there's uncertainty right what that's where you need trade psychology but you don't need trade psychology right manage emotions when you don't have anything that's triggering your emotions because you have clarity, objective clarity, you have confidence, right? You know what to expect, you're a step ahead. So this is really critical. If you're committed to eliminating large drawdowns and taking big risks and being able to accurately approach your account in a way where the compounding enables you to accelerate your financial goals with unparalleled control over your trading experience and outcomes then I, I want to invite you to access my free mini course on demand imbalance arbitrage. And that's located at marketforecastingacademy.com. It's a free mini course primer on demand imbalance arbitrage. It's not a sales letter. It's, no, there's nothing awkward. We respect people and we ask them to respect our time as well, because at the end of that, if you've gone through that little mini course and you, it goes into tremendous detail on everything, gives you proof, gives you elements of uh, examples, client experiences, explains everything, how it works, why it works, the story behind it, all that stuff. It answers literally 99% of all the questions I ever get asked in the last 10 years, okay? It's there. At the end of that, there's some requirements. If it looks like it's something you want to engage in and follow through on and pursue, there's a short application, you fill that out, and that will uh, direct you to have an evaluation directly with me. This is my life's work. I love doing this. I told you I never set this, uh, set myself on this journey to teach or have a business. It kind of fell in my lap, but I quite enjoy it. It's very fulfilling and rewarding. It's a very satisfying thing that I do. And so for that reason, I'm very hands-on with my clients. Okay, so I, want, I, need, I need to know each and every person personally so that I can help them and I can customize the approach to their personal and unique and particular needs. By doing that, I'm able to best serve them according to what they need, not some cookie cutter, one size fits all. And based on that, we can figure out uh, what is an appropriate fee structure for, for them. And I've got a unique fee structure where I actually um, only ask for, uh, for them to cover my cost between my time, my overhead, my resources that I'm going to pay out of my pocket to serve them and support them and deliver what they need to transform their life and make them profitable over a 12 month period. And then after that, I like to see them double their money on what they invested just to get to be profitable. And after that, that makes me the best investment they've made. Then I ask that, hey, the balance of my fee can be paid. I only want to really profit when you're profiting. And I share in that. It's like it's, it's, a, it's a nominal 10% of your gross profits. Uh, and it's capped. It's a limit. Once we hit the fee, whatever we arrange and figure out is appropriate for what you need and your particular needs are, that's how I like to work. So now I'm invested in your success. I have equity in your success. And that gives me a strong incentive to show up fully from you know, all of my heart, all my being excited. I'm already kind of an <laughs> extrovert and I love being with people and all that stuff. So that's how we work. We, we, we want to be intellectually honest. And again, I, I really uh, strongly recommend you look us up, Google, Google me, Google my name, see, see what comes up. Make sure that I'm, hey, am I, is this guy, you know, full of it? Or is it really real? People really have a great experience and he really uh, is genuine and delivers on his promise. Um, and that's why I can guarantee people success because this is a robust principle-based approach that doesn't change. In fact, since I developed this in 2010 for myself, I've never tweaked it, modified it, 
uh, fixed it or updated, not even once. Same thing. Who can say that today? And that tells you how robust it is. That's why it's based on principle. So I hope that opens your eyes and uh, gives you an aha moment and helps you to have a paradigm shift. Again, marketforecastingacademy.com is where to go to access the free mini course primer. And that about wraps it up for me. And so um, I really appreciate you guys spending the time with me today and to hear about this. And I hope uh, for those of you who follow through, I look forward to meeting you in person.